الصلاة وأتم التسليم على محمد خاتم النبيين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين رب اشرح لي صدري ويصر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم افتح فتوه العارفين اللهم افتح علينا حكمتك وانشر علينا رحمتك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا ذا الجلال والإكرام الحمد لله praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as is right to be praised in all of our affairs praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the ni'mah of iman another moment where we can say la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the one which the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called it miftahul jannah there is no god except Allah no God worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his beautiful messenger, his nabi, his abd, his rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa barak wa sallam. Alhamdulillah in our beautiful sessions of the Shama'il in which we're trying to get to know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The seerah itself was beautiful, a journey that we were trying to get to know the Prophet ﷺ by the few years of his life, the brief years that he had in this world, in this dunya we life, which the Prophet ﷺ gave us everything that we needed for our entire lives and generations and beyond. From here all the way till the day of judgment and even until you get into, even when you get into the paradise, our final abode inshallah ta'ala. The Prophet ﷺ in his seerah gave us all that. Then we entered into the beautiful Shama'il of the Prophet ﷺ and how to know, how to draw a portrait of the Prophet ﷺ etch it into our hearts and our minds so that we can see the Prophet ﷺ in reality when we close our eyes when we think and when we sleep we see the Prophet ﷺ this is the, our aims of this Majlis and the Shama'il gave us that and the Musannif Rahmah the beautiful Musannif Rahmah says then he begins his beautiful chapter in a beautiful way because he tells you that if you want to know somebody you first get to know the family and stuff and you get the background and he gives you a good glimpse of who that person is we went through the entire lineage of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to give us an insight of who that beautiful magnificent being sallallahu alaihi wasallam was that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose above everybody else in every generation that nur that was passed down until it came to us that gave us a beautiful introduction to the portrait of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Thereafter, we see the beautiful time when the, pro- the, the Mustanif al-Rahmadin transfers his topic. He says, when you know about the background, you know about the family, you know about the father, the grandfather, what's next? In ta'arruf and knowing somebody and how to know somebody, you need to know the ism. لِكُلِّ إِسْمٍ لَهُ نَصِيبُ مِنْ إِسْمِهِ لِكُلِّ مُسَمَّ لَهُ نَصِيبُ مِنْ إِسْمِهِ the ulama say that for every name has a reality. So to get to know the name, you know the reality of the person, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As we know with ours, the arrufs, everybody has a tag. Everybody wants to have a profile, whether it's online or whatever you have. Profiles, tags are going to be important. Why? Because people know you by them. We live in an age of fake profiles, don't we? That's because everybody wants to hide the hakika. Because in reality, they don't really have confidence on the hakika, the realities of what they are. So they're hiding behind these, these false personas and these false profiles. When you have a hakika like Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you want to broadcast that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does the broadcasting for Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he tells that he's going to send you these beautiful, this beautiful being, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but he's going to send it with beautiful tags and beautiful names. And this is what the Musannif is saying, that when you want to know the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Hakika, you got to know the name first, the Musamma. To know the Musamma, you, know, you need to know the Ism, the name that precedes it. And that's the beauty of it. When you see, when you meet somebody, you can be introduced by to, to his, his beautiful skill or whatever you have. But when you say that a person's name precedes him, I, even before a person enters into your country, or enters into your lands or whatever you have, or enters into your know-how or your social circles. If his name has already preceded him, you know that person is somebody worthy of knowing his haqiqah. And the Prophet ﷺ is going to tell you, and the Musannif told us that beautiful hadith that we mentioned and said, um, 
Jubair ibn Mut'im, we went through the beautiful hadith that the Musannif al rahmah is going to use to open this bab. Jubair ibn Mut'im says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Inna li asma an ana Muhammad wa ana Ahmad wa ana al-mahi alladhi yam'u allahu biya al-kufr wa ana al-hashir alladhi yuhsharu al-nasu ala qadamayya wa ana al-aqibu alladhi laysa ba'dahu al-nabiyyun after mentioning that beautiful hadith gives a glimpse into the beautiful, well-known names of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Here the Musannif al-Rahma brings another hadith of Sayyidina Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman radiyallahu ta'ala anhu wa anhu wa ardahu qal laqeetu al-Nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi ba'di turuq al-Madinati faqala ana Muhammadun wa ana Ahmadu wa ana Nabiyu al-Rahma وَنَبِيُّ التَّوْبَةِ وَأَنَا الْمُقَفِّي وَفِي رِوَايَ وَأَنَا الْمُقَفَّى وَأَنَا الْحَاشِرِ وَنَبِيُّ الْمَلَاحِمِ This beautiful hadith sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells Sayyidina Hudhaifa ibn al-Yaman Hudhaifa ibn al-Yaman is a beautiful sahabi he's a narrator of this hadith and sometimes we need to really really have own books Hayat al-Sahaba is going to be one of the beautiful ones. Likewise, you're going to see Imam Suyuti's books on the beautiful companions of the Prophet wasallam. Those were the ones out of the entire creation of Bani Adam, you know, of Banu Adam, children of Adam, insan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose these beautiful elect qualities of these beautiful insan to be around the beloved Prophet Muhammad wasallam. So they couldn't just be any old people. They couldn't just be any old person that could live next to the Prophet ﷺ. They could be at the side of the Prophet ﷺ. They could be by the Prophet ﷺ. These people are going to be great individuals. Uzaifa <coughs> ibn al-Yaman stands his own. When we look into the entire group of Sahaba, the Sahaba of the Prophet ﷺ, you're going to see two big groups. You're going to see either they're going to be the Muhajirun, those people that were the ones who migrated from Mecca to Medina. Or you're going to see the Al-Ansar. Ansar are going to be those beautiful beings that were inside of Medina or Yathrib at that time. And they were the ones who embraced those Muhajirun that came. Those that, uh, that you know, emigrated from Mecca to Medina. They needed some assistance. And the Ansar were those beautiful beings that gave assistance to the Sahaba that migrated with the Prophet <laughs> Where does Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman fit in this? Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa ardahu is going to be a beautiful and unique being that, no, that holds one thing that no other sahabi has. I.e. are you going to call him uh, Ansar or are you going to call him Muhajir? Look, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the one who tells Sayyidina um, Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman radiallahu ta'ala and he said when the Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says, what am I? Am I, am I an Ansar? Am I a Muhajir? This is what you class me as. And the Prophet ﷺ says, he says, you can be an Ansar if you wish. And you can be a Muhajir if you wish. Whatever you please, you be whichever one you want to be. You need to understand the context of that because the Prophet ﷺ didn't say that to any other Sahabi. Full stop. None. They can be both. Or you can be one, whichever one he chooses. For that, you need to know who you need the background to it because that's going to tell you where he is and how special he is of a, of a, of a narrator, of a sahabi, of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah be pleased with all of them, all of them, every single one of them. Huzaifa ibn al-Yaman, his father was Yaman, that's his name. And he was one who was born and raised in Makkah. But he was one of those that when he was in Makkah, in the days of Jahiliyyah, before he embraced Islam, he actually murdered somebody. Murdered somebody. And these are people that you have to understand. The Sahaba came from very, very different backgrounds. But khiyarukum fil jahiliyadi, khiyarukum fil islam. Ida faqihu. The best of them in jahiliya are the best of them in Islam when they have tafakku and deep understanding of religion. So this is Yaman. He murdered somebody. That's the background he comes from. And then... To, in, yani, before the family can get him and yani, I'll take a life for a life he runs off and he goes all the way to Yathrib in those days the early days before Islam and he stays there inside of Yathrib and he marries into a tribe from the, the, the Yathribis 
from Medina. As he's, as he's married into there, a child is born. Huzaifa, this one we're speaking about. So where's Huzaifa born? He's born in Yathrib, Medina. Many, many years later, the Prophet wasallam then begins to give the da'wah and he receives wahi. And this Yaman, he goes all the way to Makkah to embrace Islam. He embraces Islam along with his wife inside of Makkah. And then they go back all the way to Yathrib. And you're going to see that he starts to teach his family. So he's, Huzaifa, Sayyidina Huzaifa radiallahu is going to be one who's almost like brought up in Islam. But he's never seen the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So his Islam is from his parents. So Huzaifa is going to hear his version of Islam through, the Prophet, through his mother and his father who's telling them the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this or do this or don't do this. And as soon as he would hear He'd be the one to practice it, even at a young age when he was a little boy. Comes in his in his sawane, in, in his life story that he was one as a child. He is samitna ata'na. He just obeys straight away. He knows no other way. But as soon as he hears about the Prophet sallam, he begins to fall in love, as anybody would sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then he hears more about the Prophet sallam, and he falls in love. And his love just keeps increasing and increasing and increasing until he can't stop himself any longer. And so he goes all the way, he does hijrah. And this is like reverse hijrah. This is before hijrah happens actually. So he goes all the way from Yathrib back to Makkah before hijrah has happened. And what happens, he says at that stage, he comes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, a little boy, young boy, teenager. And he says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, I want to embrace Islam. He says a shahada on the hands of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and thereafter he asked the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So he says, "What does that make me? Does that make me a Yathribi or a, a Meccan?" Yani, what are you saying now? He says, "Further, what I'm asking for clarification: Am I going to be Muhajir? Am I going to be an Ansar?" And here the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is famous uh, thing in the Tirmizi Sharif Riwayah. He says, "He says choose whichever takhtar what ma He says, "Do whatever you choose." He says, if you want to be Ansar, then be an Ansar. If you want to be a Muhajir, then you be a Muhajir. This is you've got the choice. And look at that. He doesn't give that to anybody else. Whatever they are, they have to deal with. He's a person who's born inside of Yathrib, raised in Yathrib. He's come to Makkah to embrace Islam. And the Prophet says, choose. He says, what he says, I, I want to be from the Ansar. That's the greatness of the Ansar. And Ansar. That's the ones that the Prophet ﷺ always stayed with. Even after Fatih Makkah, even after all the victories that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them, he stayed. And maybe it's his farsightedness that Hudayfa chose to be from the Ansar. That he's going to be a very, very special person. And when, when at the time when he goes back to Yani Medina, he stays in Yathrib. When the Prophet ﷺ does Hijrah, he's over there to greet the Prophet. ﷺ. His father then Yani he, he goes. And almost like they stay inside of Medina and they serve the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He doesn't attend in Badr. He's not one of those. He was outside with his father. He says, "Had I been of those that would have been there in Medina at that time, I would have definitely been by the side of the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam." But he wasn't. He was out on a travel on on a trade expedition. Inside of Ahad, different story. Now Ahad comes. He's by the side of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Beautiful qualities. He, one of his qualities was wisdom. He was known as the Hakim amongst the Sahaba. But likewise, he's going to be given a title. That's going to, a quality which gave him a title, which is going to link him to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was called Sahibu Sirr Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was he was called the secret bearer of the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And that's because he was really yani, known for his amana. That as, if anybody gave him something to look after. Whether it's a physical thing or a secret, he would keep it locked up inside his chest and nobody would know about it that shouldn't know about it. And for that reason, the Prophet ﷺ would give him certain tasks. The Prophet ﷺ even told him the names of the munafiqun inside of Medina at that time. He says, so and so is a munafiq, so and so is a munafiq, so and so is a munafiq, don't tell anybody. And he says, it's the reason why the Prophet ﷺ exposed him to only this Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman was because he says, go and tell me what they're up to so we can protect the Muslims from them. And Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman would go amongst those munafiqun and relate back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa what they were 
plotting and, and planning against the Muslims and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu loved him so much because of this quality. He would give him secrets that nobody else of the Sahaba had. And even, look at this, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he leaves this temporal world and he goes back to his Lord Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Sayyidina Hudhaifa ibn al-Yaman, the names of all of those, the munafiqs that were mentioned to him, it was a secret. He kept it to him, kept it with him, and he didn't tell anybody. Abu Bakr Siddiq comes. He says, so we can protect ourselves. He says, tell me what the names of the, those munafiq are. And Hudhaifa ibn al-Yaman says, nope. He says, I can't tell you. I'm not going to tell you. He says, is it this person or is it that person? He says, nope. Umar the Aladdin's time. Hudhaifa ibn al-Yaman is still there. Look what happens. Umar says, he says, tell me the names of those munafiqs. He says, tell me, I need to know who they are so I can, I can sort them out. Umar ibn al-Khattab gets the same answer. He says, no, I'm not going to tell you. So he says, he says, you're not going to tell me. He says, at least tell me if any of my governors are munafiqs. <laughs> So he says, I'm not going to tell you. He says, but Allah will expose them to you. He says, there's one of them that is. That's all he says. He says, the one of them that is. And what is, and Hudhaifa ibn al-Yaman in his own account, he says, he says, there was not even a week that passed, except for some other reason, Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab had this governor kicked out of his, his, his ranks. And Hudhaifa ibn al-Yaman says, he goes, uh, glory be to Allah, the one who exposed him without me exposing him and disclosing this secret that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa gave. Even at the time of the janaz, as in the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab, the Prophet, uh, Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab would stand at the beginning and to find out if this person was a munafiq or not, he would, he would stand and get all the rules set up. He would be standing there almost ready to start his Allahu Akbar. As soon as he raises his hands, he'd put it back down. He says, is Hudhaifa here? And as soon as he, they say, he's here, Allahu Akbar, he'd stop because he knew that this person is not a munafiq. And as soon as he would hear, he says, is Hudhaifa here? He says, no, he's not here. He says, I, I can't pray this. Can somebody else go and pray this? He'd get somebody else to lead their prayer, but he wouldn't pray it because he'd know that that person is one of those munafiqs that was exposed by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's Sahib was Sir of the Prophet of the of, of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the rawi that we're speaking about. The person who knows the secret, intimate secrets of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hudhaifa ibn al-Yaman is going to be a beautiful being. And if time permitted, inshallah, we could have gone into much more of his story. Beautiful being and how his demise came and the simplest being, subhanAllah. At the time of his death, when he was made a governor of Kufa and Baghdad and all places, when he was actually go, when they heard that he was going to be made a governor of Kufa, which almost sees his final battle, where he goes against the Persians, and the Persians almost that's that's where his life finishes. You're going to see that when the people were all waiting to see this beautiful Hudayfa ibn al Yaman, and when he comes, he was riding on a donkey, and he was riding on a donkey in such like disheveled look, and he looked like an assuming person. He literally went past them into the masjid. And they didn't even realize who he was. That's the simplicity of the Sahaba. And that's why they carried Islam forward to the generations. May Allah give us a portion to even a little portion of how these great beings were. And the amana, that when we have been given amana, whether it's physical or even those secrets, that I'm going to preserve them and fulfill the rights of them. The Prophet ﷺ said a time will come when you will not find an ameen inside of your communities. Anybody to, that will be able to hold a secret. As soon as you tell them, they'll be broadcasting it on social media or all over the internet. It says, I'm not supposed to tell anybody, but I'm just telling you. And then suddenly before you know it, it's all over the internet. He says, to the point, the Prophet ﷺ said, that statements like this will become rampant. That, oh, I don't know if there's anybody any trustworthy here, but I've heard this in a town, such and such a town, 300 miles away from here or so many miles away from here there is a person who is trustworthy go to him that's how far apart that they will be don't we don't we don't have to listen to that and say oh we know that's going to happen but we don't need to be contributors to that in our time mu'min iman is still alive in our hearts alhamdulillah we need to be of those who uphold our amana and if we want to be like Sayyidina Hudayf ibn al-Yaman then we need to protect whatever amana has been given to us 
he is a beautiful being radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa ardahu may Allah be pleased with him he says in this beautiful hadith laqitu an nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says I met the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what a beautiful meeting that would have been for them to say that they met the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam لَقِيتُ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وسلم. He says, I met the Messenger, the, the Prophet of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم في بعد طرق المدينة in one of the, the streets of Medina and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم called him immediately over and he says, فَقَالْ I am Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم That's a beautiful and the most revered name and the most famous name of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Ana Ahmad. And my name is Ahmad. As he was known in the previous scriptures. Wa ana nabiyur rahmah. And I am the prophet of mercy. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have forgot that beautiful name. See, these names have a reality. The prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam isn't just giving his titles. He isn't just saying that, oh, this is my name. I am Sir so-and-so. Or I am King so-and-so. And I am Mufti so-and-so. And I am Mawlan and so-and-so. These are not just titles. The Prophet Wasallam's reality was that. His name is just given a ta'arruf to you. And I, he said, I am Nabiyu Rahma. I am the Prophet of mercy. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil'alameen. We have not sent you, O Muhammad sallallahu except as a mercy for the, all of the worlds. For all of the worlds. How do we know that? That he was a mercy for all the makhluqat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was a mercy for the humankind. He was a mercy for the jinn kind. He was a mercy for the malaika. He was a mercy for the malaika that have been honored. Some of them just by doing salawat from the time that they were born until the day of judgment where they're going to end their lives. They're the ones who are ennobled by the Prophet ﷺ. How did the Prophet ﷺ be a mercy for us? The, the insan, Banu Insan. لا أمينه به من الخصف والمسقي وعذاب الاستئصال. He says, the Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, because of my Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and because of his dua, they says, don't leave my ummah in a state like you did with the previous nations that leaves their themselves. Uh, yet he been taken by earthquakes or the earth swallowing them up that was the adab that happened in the previous times Allah's messenger وسلم, says we heard about it in the previous times but ya Allah don't let that be for my ummah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted that dua in our haq because the sins that are happening on the face of this earth now demand that we are sucked into the earth but it's the mercy of that beautiful Prophet of Mercy, the dua of the Prophet of Mercy, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that stopped that from happening, and we've been protected. Likewise, we hear that the previous nations had musk. Musk is when the, when the faces were, the entire beings and the genetics were changed. Allah subhanahu wa taala made certain people into dogs, and Allah subhanahu wa taala made certain people into pigs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the entire beings change from human form into absolute yani, yani, swines. The Prophet ﷺ, when he heard this, raised his hands to his Lord, Jalla Jalalahu wa ta'ala azamatahu. And Allah's Messenger وسلم, says, Ya Allah, don't let this be for my ummah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted it in the haqq of his Rasul وسلم, on our behalf. And so that we don't have that, that, that punishment. No, we are going to be seeing people that are going to be transformed from beautiful beings of inside Bani Adam, yeah, the Ashraful Makhluqat, to be the worst of them, the swines and the pigs and the dogs. Likewise, Adabul Istiqsal, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the dua of the Prophet وسلم, that he didn't bring a, a general calamity which, which punished the entire population one go. By the time of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, and the entire population besides those that were on, embarked in the Safinat al-Nuh, alayhi salatu wa taslim. 
all of them general adab that would come down وَمَا بُعِثَ بِهِ سَبَبٌ لِإِسْتِعَادِهِمْ وَمُجِبُ لِسَلَاءِ مَعَاشِ مَمَعَادِ فَبُعِثَ رَحْمَةِ لِأُمَّتِهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم why because the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was sent as a mercy not as a one that brings adab Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم was sent as a mercy وَرَحْمَةِ لِلْعَالَمِينَ and a mercy to all of the worlds وَرَحِيمًا بِهِمْ وَمُتَرَحِيمًا مُسْتَغْفِرًا لَهُمْ and he was a mercy a source of mercy and a means of pulling the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala مُسْتَغْفِرًا لَهُمْ and he would supplicate for us in the dead of the night the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when he could have been resting because he's done enough for the ummah already the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would be up in the night until his feet would be swelling but he would be asking ummati 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 sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that's the mercy that we're speaking about when we see the name Nabiyur Rahma, now it holds dimensions and it tells you the reality of that beautiful being وَجَعَلَ ummatu marhuma. And because of the Prophet of Mercy, his Ummah is made the Prophet, the Ummah of Mercy. Rahma, And this Ummah was always known in the previous nations as the Prophet, the Ummah of Mercy, the, the ones who are going to receive the Prophet of Mercy Sallallahu Allah. And the Prophet Sallallahu would instruct each and every one of us from his Ummah to have mercy upon those around them. And he وسلم, said, In Allah Yuhibu Min Ibadihi Ruhama. Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves from his servants and his slaves a Ruhama, those who are merciful. A beautiful quality of mercy that the Prophet وسلم, would instruct. Allah. And he said, Allah loves those people. In another riwayah, a famous hadith, Al Rahimuna, Yarhamuhumur Rahmanu Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, Irhamu man fil ardi, Yarhamukum man fi sama. يَرْحَمْكُمْ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاءُ وَكُمَا قَالَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلِيمُ Hadith al-Rahmah This is the one where uh, the Prophet ﷺ says mm-hmm. Ar-Rahimuna Those are the Rahimun Those people who are merciful يَرْحُمُهُمُ Rahman. The merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows mercy upon them So the Prophet ﷺ then says إِرْحَمُوا مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ So you show mercy to those of the inhabitants of the world يَرْحَمْكُمْ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاءِ the, the one in the heavens, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have mercy upon you. إِلَىٰ غَيْرِ ذَٰلِكَ فَكَانَتِ الرَّحْمَةِ فِي هَذِي الْأُمَّةِ أَكْثَرَ مِنْ غَيْرِهَا مِنَ الْأُمَّةِ And likewise, that's, that, that is why the ulama say that when we look to gauge, when we look to the previous nations and we see what portion they took of mercy and then we look to what we have of mercy we have got the greatest portion of mercy through the Prophet of Mercy Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Thereafter he says, Wa Nabiyu Rahma. He begins to mention to Sayyidina Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, second one. Then he says, Wa Nabiyu Wa Nabiyu Tawbah. And I am the Prophet of Tawbah, repentance. Wa Amara bi Wa Am Wa Al-Amiru biha bi shurutiha al-muqarrara. And he instructed his Ummah to keep asking for forgiveness and repentance. وَكَثِيرُ التَّوْبَةِ إِلَى اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَكَثِيرُ الرُّجُوعِ إِلَى الْإِلَيْهِ And in his entire being, his days and his nights, he would be constantly a person who displayed ruju إِلَى اللَّهِ Turning back to Allah, in repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He himself says, إِنِّي أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ وَأَتُوبُ إِلَيْهِ Indeed, I ask for forgiveness to Allah and I turn to my Lord towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فِي الْيَوْمِ in the day in, and in the night, it says in the riwayah, Sabi'ina marra. It says over 70 times. Oh, fi riwayah, it says mi'ata marra. In another riwayah, it says over a hundred times. Here's the irony of it because Allah's Messenger, وسلم, as we know, is ma'asum. That he's sinless and he's asking for forgiveness. Why then? Why would he ask for forgiveness? تَعْلِيمًا لِأُمَّتِهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وسلم, To instruct us. That's what they call Nabi Tawbah. The one who reminds us that the doors of Tawbah are open no matter what you do. يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Whatever you have done, O servants of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the doors of His mercy are always open. Don't ever lose hope of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it wasn't for this Nabi Tawbah, we would not know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
we would not know Allah. We would not know that the doors of the of mercy of Allah. And we look at our sins and we think, oh, we are overburdened. We have oceans of sins. But then we look through this beautiful lens of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, no, your sins might be as much as the oceans of this world. But we have a Lord who's the Ghaffar and the Ghafur Rahim. And he forgives. So turn to Allah. Tawbah ila Allah. Tawbu ila Allah jami'an. Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of you, you will find the Lord who's forgiven, who's, who will forgive every one of your sins, the major, the minor, everyone. There he says, Wa anil muqaffi. He says, I'm the one. We'll come to the meaning of that. In the, in, he's going to explain it himself. He says, Anil muqaffa. So, muqaffi is the isma file and the, uh, yani the one who's the doer, if you will. And anil muqaffa in another riwayah, he says, with a fatha on it, he says, yani the object of, yeah, the maf'ul, if you will. The dominant opinion and, and the, 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 the stronger narration is going to be an al muqaffi with a kasra. Aladhi qaffa athara man sabakahu. I the one who's almost like the, the one who's the last one who's in succession, who's who's doing the, the final bidding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the succession of Anbiya that came before him. I watabi atwara man taqaddamahu min al asfiya. I whatever Adam alayhi salatu wa salam came. He started that, that message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the one who's going to be coming at the end, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is going to be the muqaffi, the one who finishes it, seals it off, fills all the gaps, all the things that were obscure or unclear. Allah's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, completed it and made it in the best form that there's going to be no obscurity left in the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They said, wa anil hashir. I am the hashir, the gatherer. And we spoke about that beautiful... Why they called him the gatherer? Because from the, as the Prophet ﷺ says, al hashir yuhshir al nas." I am the hashir, the gatherer, the one Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will gather the people below my liwa of hamd, I below my uh, banner on the day of judgment, and that's why another word riwayah says, "Sayyidina Adam wa madunahu tahta liwa'i wa la fakhr." He says, Adam alayhi salatu was salam and everybody after him until the last person on the face of this earth, everybody from the jinn, everybody from the malaika will be unneeding or so will be underneath my liwa of hamd, the banner of hamd, his flag on the day of judgment. He says, and I boast not. He says, I'm not saying this to boast. Not that I'm going to be the one who's the leader of everybody. But it is a boasting for us. Because we can say that's our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah give us a, a space under that beautiful banner. Amen. What is that beautiful banner? The Liwa or Hamd. We don't have time to go into that. That beautiful banner is one that we can all look out for on the day of judgment. We're not going to miss it, inshallah. We from his Ummah will, inshallah, be given a place under that beautiful, with the likes of who? Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. All of the prophets are going to be there. Underneath my banner of my Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, wa an al hashir, he says, gathering every fit tahdib. The Musannif continues in his uh, mentioning in the beautiful book of Imam Nawawi. Will continue and get to know the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam by these beautiful names. Now, when we read these names, we're going to have a different dimension, a different understanding of the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So we mention again, Tabarrukan, Ana Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa ana Ahmad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wa ana Nabiyu Rahma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wa Nabiyu Tawbah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wa ana Al-Muqaffi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wa ana Al-Muqaffa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wa ana Al-Hashir sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wa Nabiyu Al-Malahim sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barak wa sallam We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us that the true haqiqa of the names of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the haqiqa of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The ta'aruf of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The, the ma'rifah of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The closeness of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us true understanding of His beautiful life and the beautiful shamail of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alayhi Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik